Hello and welcome back everybody to another World of Warcraft gold farming episode. So in this video we're going to be farming tiny treasure chests and to get these tiny treasure chests we're going to need an item called the Potion of Treasure Finding. Uh, so this is similar to the Potion of Luck farms but this is in the Cataclysm Zones. So I think in Vestir, Aldum, Hyjal and uh, Deep Palm you can use this potion. And uh, for this video I have a, a spot here that I found recently. And uh, this spot is in uh, the Chamber of the Moon, it's underground, but uh, it's very easy to get here. It's basically uh, next to this, or in between this, uh, these two artificial rivers. It's like a giant V-shape here, Obelisk of the Moon. And there's two entrances, there's one here, and there's another one I think in this place here. And uh, it's easy to get into. Uh, you might need a flying mount, I'm not sure. You probably do, unless you can survive this full damage, but I'm not sure how you get out of here. But uh, these tiny treasure chests, they have a chance of dropping, a f well, they always have a few raw gold coins. It's usually about one to five raw gold, which is pretty decent. They also drop a bunch of greens, which is uh, going to be one of our main money makers for this video. Uh, they drop a bunch of lock boxes as well. So if you have a rogue or if you know someone or uh, if you are a rogue yourself, then you can pickpocket those uh, and they drop a few gold and a few greens and stuff, can, which you can vendor or disenchant. Also, uh, this place drops, uh, well, the tiny treasure chests, they drop crafting reagents such as ores and volatiles, and uh, they drop around, I think, elementium ore and pyrite ore, and pyrite ore sells for quite a lot. And uh, volatiles sell for quite a lot, well, I think three of the volatiles sell for quite a lot. Volatile earth sells decently though. Uh, and uh, ember silk cloth, so we're going to get ember silk from the treasure chests and from these mobs just in general, just the raw drops from these mobs. Uh, so what else? You wanna, you definitely want the potion of treasure finding, and you can find this on the auction house. It usually costs about two to three hundred gold, sometimes more. Uh, the mats are not as easy as the potion of luck. I think the potion of luck you only need uh, one golden lotus, and that's very easy to find. But I think the potion of treasure finding they require a bunch of different uh, herbs and stuff to uh, make. So either make them yourself if you're an alchemist, or get a friend to make them, or just buy them off the auction house. It's just much more convenient. Uh, you, these mobs are around level 85, and they are some of them are elite, however, if you can see, most of them are just like at quarter health or whatever, 25%, 33%, 33, yeah, but basically all 33% health. So uh, you shouldn't really have too much trouble if you're around this level, however, I do recommend coming back at level 90, plus uh, when you have uh, a decent flying speed and Azeroth flying, so that will make this far much easier. But uh, another thing you may want is, you definitely, I think it's probably not worth doing unless you have tailoring, since uh, it'll probably double or triple your cloth drops. I mean, you can still do this without tailoring, however, um, it really depends on your um, ember silk cloth prices, because there's so many th different things you can do with ember silk cloth, especially with tailoring and enchanting. So I think it's really worth picking up tailoring for cloth scavenging. You don't have to level it up all the way to 700. You can just level it up to, I think, about 450 or something. Maybe 500, I don't know. I, I leveled up to 500 just to make sure. And you can pick up the cloth uh, scavenging perk in Dalaran. There's a, a, cloth, a tailoring trainer. And it's a very simple quest. It takes about two seconds literally to do. You just have to pick it up and return it and then you're done. But I recommend tailoring. And also I do recommend enchanting. I think this is more important since uh, the greens that you're going to be getting, they're going to drop, well, if you disenchant them, they're going to drop, uh, I think, like celestial essences or something. And they're sold decently, but the main focus is going to be uh, the hypnotic dust. And on my server, hypnotic dust, I think, sells for around 12 to 13 gold each. So if you get about 50 hypnotic dust, you'll be making a killing uh, if you do this for an hour or whatever. But uh, yeah, that's really important, but you can just vendor these uh, greens or you can try putting up from the auction house for uh, lobies and transmog or whatever, but they will take way too long to sell and I don't really bother with that. Uh, what else? Uh, other than those professions, you definitely, you don't have to be a ranged class, however, it's much easier doing this as a ranged class. Uh, what I usually do is, uh, since the most efficient way of farming Ember Silk is, I think at the moment, is the Bastion of Twilight trash farm. And uh, what I usually do is I do that and it takes me 20 minutes to finish that and then in my downtime I log on to this character on my druid which uh, druids are most optimal for farming this and I, I just log on to this character and then I carry on farming here until my um, Bastion of Twilight resets. Uh, you can also, also do this for Firelands, I think Firelands drop more greens but this place drops a, a nice combination between uh, hypnotic dust or greens and uh, cloths drops which is nice. But yeah, if you should be a ranged class, you don't have to be. If you're a melee class, then you will you will just be doing this. You'll be killing them, you'll be looting, and then you'll be moving on to the next part where you're going to have to mount up as well. And then you have to move on to the next one, and that's a bit tedious. Depends what class you are. If you're a warrior, it's not too bad because you can charge and stuff. Uh, if you're a hunter, for example, it's very easy. Same with a mage and stuff. So ranged classes are the best. 
Druids are obviously the best since what I do is I just basically start here, I pop star fall, and it just kills everything around me within 40 yards. And by the time I get here, the star fall runs out, and all these mobs should be dead. And if they're not killed, then I just hurricane. And basically after I kill them, I just basically loot them. So it's basically like uh, gathering herbs, but you're just gathering mobs that you've already killed. And I just go around and I just loot them like this. And I'm not using Potion of Finding now, but I, I was using it before when I was doing my farm. But yeah, the route for this farm is pretty simple. As I said, I just, well, as a druid, it depends what class you are. If you're a melee class, you're just going to have to uh, hop from pack to pack. But as a, uh, as a druid, in this case, I just start full and I usually stick to these three rooms. So they have a really quick respawn timer. Usually once I kill, finish killing these and move on to here, these ones already start to respawn. And then um, once I've moved on to here, these are all respawned. Usually half of them respawn when I'm here and then the rest of the half respawn when I'm looping back around. So you won't need, an, you won't need the cross realm assist add-on to respawn these mobs. The only reason you'd use this add-on is just to uh, get rid of competition. So if you find someone is farming it on your server for like a few hours or whatever and um, even then, if you have one person, other person farming this, it shouldn't really be a big deal. Since this place is so big and these mobs respawn so quickly, you can just stick to this side and they can stick to that side or whatever. But this add-on's useful, uh, it just basically allows it to hop into another realm. So basically, uh, it will reset these mobs, they'll disappear, and then they'll reappear. And there you go, I'm on this uh, German realm here. It basically uses the World of Warcraft's in-game uh, pre-made group finder tool. So that's nice, it just makes things much simpler. But you don't really need that. I farmed this for about 20 minutes and uh, I basically saw zero competition and while I was looking for a place to farm in, uh, I was here for about 20 minutes, just another 20 minutes just to check it out, just to see how um, well it does and I didn't f find any uh, competition then and even after I finished completing the uh, the goal breakdown and uh, the calculations and stuff, I was here for another 30 minutes or whatever just to um, uh, finish off the finishing touches and I, I basically saw no competition so I was here for about an hour or two and I saw no competition and uh, yeah basically you shouldn't have any trouble with competition and that's really useful even if you do uh, these mobs respawn so quickly but uh, I'll just give you a small uh, tutorial of how I do this so basically it's pretty much self-explanatory I just run across here and it just kills all the mobs for me but that's simple if you're a druid if you're not a druid, then uh, you're gonna have to find out your own method. But I get uh, what else? Uh, yeah, if you're a range class, I mean, if you're a melee class, uh, there's an item called Findle's Looterang, and this basically allows you to uh, loot things from range. So as you can see, there's a few corpses here, and I can just press E, which is I banded it to, and it costs about 100 gold on my server. It's very cheap to buy. I think engineers make this. But it has a three second cooldown, and usually by the time you've uh, finished killing the next pack, it should be off. And uh, basically you won't have to run towards them uh, if you have this item, you can just loot them from afar, which makes things much quicker. So I definitely recommend picking up that item. So I guess that's the end of the explanation part of this video, so let's get into the gold breakdown. So I farmed this for 20 minutes, and in just raw gold drops from the mobs, I got 255 gold in total from vendor trash, so greys, uh, food items, uh, gems and stuff, but gems didn't really drop, and that came up for a total of 66 gold. Uh, the raw go uh, gold drops from the chests, so from the tiny treasure chests, I got 103 gold. Uh, I got 718 ember silk cloth in total, and that sold for one gold and 25 silver each, uh, for a total of 898 gold. I got two volatile airs, which sold at six gold and 45 silver each, for 13 gold in total. I got two volatile lifes, which I sold for six gold and seven silver each, at 12 gold in total. I got six volatile fires uh, that sold for eight gold and seventy silver each for fifty-two gold in total. I got seven volatile earths which sold for two gold and sixty-five silver each for nineteen gold in total. I got eight elementium ores which sold for two gold and thirteen silver each for seventeen gold in total. I got three pyrite ores which sold for eleven gold and twenty-seven silver each for a total of thirty-four gold. I got thirteen greens in total from the tiny treasure chests and from just a random mob drops. And uh, I disenchanted those into 29 Hypnotic Dust, which sold for 12 gold and 5 silver each on my server. And that's for a total of 349 gold. And also I had 4 Greater Celestial Essences left over, which sold for 1 gold and 55 silver each for a total of 6 gold. So in 20 minutes I made 1,824 gold. And that's quite decent, it's nearly 2,000 gold in 20 minutes. And that came up to 5,472 gold per hour. So as you can see, this is a very efficient farm. Um, 
it's nice to do this while you're waiting for uh, your instances to reset. So if you're doing Bastion of uh, Twilight or uh, Firelands of Trash, as I've already talked about. So if you don't want to sell the Ember Silk Cloth directly to the auction house, if your auction house pr prices are low for Ember Silk Cloth or whatever, you, uh, if you have tailoring, you can uh, craft them into uh, greens. And I think either the belt or the braces or something are the most efficient. I don't know. Um, I'll probably link a, leave a link in the description or something for that. But you can disenchant those and they will give you a bunch of hypnotic dust. And I think that's more uh, useful than uh, just selling it to the auction house. You'll probably make more profit that way. And uh, if you don't want to do that, you can uh, uh, use the hypnotic dust that you got from the raw uh, green drops. And you can combine that with the bolts of ember silk cloth to make ember silk bags. And those usually sell for around 200 to 500 gold on some servers. Which is nice. So I recommend doing um, either the disenchanting the cloths or uh, making them into bags. That's probably the most efficient way of uh, making the most gold. And um, um, surprisingly, these materials, like the volatiles, the ores and the cloths and stuff, they sold very quickly. They sold within probably about an hour or two. Some of them took uh, probably about three hours, like the um, Greatest Celestial Essence and stuff. But these materials sell very quickly on the auction house. I'm quite surprised. Not a lot, I don't think a lot of people do um, these Cataclysm farms anymore. I think a lot of them have been nerfed to the ground. So this one might be nerfed in the future, so I'd recommend just doing this as much as you can before it does get nerfed. It's a really nice way of making gold right now. Especially if you don't like farming instances or they're on lockout. But I guess that's going to be the end of this video, guys. Like and favorite if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more gold guides like this from me in the future. And until next time, guys, bye!